board to see what effect that has because I might want to preserve this texture a bit more and make it a bit crisper. Uh, using the light blue and the thinners, push quite high, loading quite high, pressure as uh, at a default setting of about 50. And now in real watercolour yeah, I tended to work at about 45 degrees and I would sort of bleed the uh, the, the puddle of paint down the paper and that's why I'm doing this now because it's it's what I'm familiar with doing starting at the top you see again some nice effects here some nice bleedy watercolour effects so sure bleedy is not a word uh, but it ought to be See, I have the brush at about 200. Uh, something you will find that if you try and use this slider here, you can only get to a maximum of 100. If you click on it, double click on it, uh, you can numerically put in an, uh, a figure bigger. A figure bigger? A bit poetic there. That will work. But you can also go way beyond that. Uh, by using the shortcut I mentioned earlier about holding down shift and dragging. Yeah, look. Of course the bigger the brush the slower it will be. There's likely to be a little bit of lag if you do that because this is quite processor heavy. It's doing a lot of maths to, to make these lovely effects here. I think I'm going to warm that a bit with some yellow. Make it a bit richer. No, these again, see without doing too much work, uh, again, some quite interesting effects here. You will find that um, the paint does run out, like on, um, like on the other, like on the oil brush, for instance. I'm just dotting sort of patches of colour around really, uh, putting the, introducing some blue to the shadow sort of make that a colder blue really. If I notice how light I've got the colour, if I made a colour dark, if I make it very positive, it really does come out quite strongly. And this is where the thinner is at about 50%. See, if I if I push it down. I'm going to make the brush a bit smaller for this. Contr shift and drag. See, that's quite. But there's a bit of um, an edge here that I don't like, or uh, not that I don't like it. I don't want it on this particular thing. So I'm going to see if it's any better by changing the blend mode to multiply. Yeah, the colours are a little more, more muted, but I think you don't get the white fringe that the watercolour blend mode uh, uh, seems to experience, which is fine if you're working over white. But if you're working over a tinted colour like this, it shows a little bit, which I don't want. Playing with lighter colour again, pushing the thinners up. I want to tidy that bit up a bit, I'm going to make the brush smaller. So you can go back in. This is more forgiving than real watercolour. You try going back in and sorting out something that's wrong with real watercolour, you'll have hours of fun and a lot of frustration more than likely. I can definitely testify to that.
still just carrying on doing what I said I was doing before, which is um, adding some blue to the darker areas, to the shade, shaded areas. Something else you can do um, with these brushes, of course, it is much harder with real watercolour. You can use the eraser on them, which of course doesn't work in the real world at all. Look at that. Now that's pretty neat. Uh, the equivalent in the real world would be to use uh, blotting paper or bits of tissue to just dab off where you just put paint. And if it's a pigment that stains the paper, uh, they're all triggered basically. Uh, you would not be able to get back to white or whatever colour you had underneath. But with this you can. So with a bit of time and patience there's no excuse not to make a really nice and neat watercolour painting if you want it. You can have either, you can have it both ways. Neat and blobby. Hmm. Now I'm actually doing spots and letting them bleed into one another. And keeping the paper wet all the time. and not using Insta-Dry. Now, I think you'll probably agree, this is looking quite watercolory. These brushes work. They might not work in exactly the same way as real watercolours, as I've said before but they can certainly give a very convincing watercolour -y look. See, there is a little bit of lag there. I can live with that. In the real world, I would actually have to wait for the watercolour to dry before I could put the next, the next um, wash over the top. So I see this as the equivalent of that. Waiting for the paintbrush to appear is a bit like having to wait for the watercolour to dry. It's a trade-off. and the equivalent to laying a washes one over another um, I would suggest in digital is to actually have uh, several layers of watercolour. I'll make another one now and show you what I mean. Setting it to... I'll set this one to multiply as well. Now, if I wanted to make it darker and lay another one over the top and I'm not affecting the one underneath. 
but it still looks watercolour, doesn't it? I'm not being very careful with this. I'll have to go and do a lot of tidying up later. Because I'm a bit anal like that, I can't can't stand it to be too untidy. Don't know why I'm whispering. Well, I do, because it's quite late at night. I don't want to wake the cat up. on top of that you then had the added control you still got opacity that you can play with if you decide you can be quite bold and then knock it back not going to do that at the moment but this sort of point out that is still available to you something else that's not available it's water, real watercolour Now, I don't find it particularly easy to lay a flat wash. You would have to start, as I described, uh, real watercolour works, I think, working from top to bottom quite methodically, working down the page, and then uh, isolate that layer if you want the, the wash to stay as a flat wash. Alternately, of course, you can just use the bucket fill and then work on it with watercolours. That works demonstrate how I won't keep this layer set to multiply bucket fill sometime today would be nice there we go um, I'll use a different colour watercolour, otherwise the blue probably won't show up, will it? Come on cursor, where have you gone? I've lost my cursor, there we go. Process of catching up again. Watercolour. Right, I'll use a lemony colour, so it'll show up. Uh, if I push the thinners, if you push the thinners right up, it acts like water, look. effectively like a sort of wet eraser. Um, if I push it down a bit then it should introduce a bit more colour, yes, a bit more colour to it now. Look. Take the pressure down, Put the size up, make it a bit of a softer blend and of course you can still use the blenders on them as if you haven't got enough toys look the blenders work with them as well you begin to see the potential in these tools? I do. I'm expecting great things from you guys using these things. Right, let's get rid of that. I wasn't planning on that. I just did that to show it to you. Now I'm going to mooch around doing this for a bit longer, get it to a stage a bit further on, and then we'll move on to something else. Righto, I've taken the image a little bit further along to here now, 
Now, you might be jumping up and down going, hang on, how did he do all that? Uh, but I haven't actually done that much to it, really. I've been carrying on doing the same things I was doing before. I'll show you. Going from the bottom up. The base is the same. All I've done to the sky here is I want, didn't want so much texture in that, so using the oil paints, I painted a bit of sky in a yellow and sort of turquoisey blue colour there, to, just to block out the, the texture there, and it lightened it a bit as well, because it was a bit dark there. It looked a bit like a gloomy day. Didn't want that. Guides are the same, shade is the same. I had two layers of. Uh, chalk highlight. I've played with those a bit, sculpted them a bit more. I've added yellow to the original watercolour layer. I collapsed the two layers down that I had there. I had that divided into two layers. I collapsed that down uh, because really that was just the shade layer. Uh, but I wanted to give more life to it so I have added some yellow to some of the lighter bits. That's what this is here. That's what given that more of a glow and some of the other parts as well. I, as you can see even on the representation here, I haven't done much down there because I want the colour to be purer down here because it's closer up. Uh, I have added two layers of what I'm describing as local colour. It's the colour of the individual items. The skin I've divided away from the clothing. It would be like working in real life. I would do a wash of colour doing the face. I would let that dry then I would do a wash of colour on the clothes and then work back into each one separately and this is all I'm doing in, in digital terms, I'm dividing it into layers. Uh, I've Let me open up the settings so you can see I've been using the paint brushes in these sort of settings uh, fairly thinned down, uh, not too heavily loaded and it gives a nice watercolour-y look to it which of course is what we're after uh, I've been using a combination of cool, uh, cool and warm pinks. The warms are down there, the cools are there, and it gives nice variation to the knuckles, stuff like that. Uh, you can darken it down whenever you want to. And I've just been going around doing bits like this. So you haven't really missed much. That's all I've been playing with, but it gives much more life and volume. I'm still working at the low resolution at the moment uh, which means the brushes work quite fast which when you're blocking in the bigger areas is valuable and stop you getting too frustrated waiting for all the system to catch up because no matter how fast your system is if the brushes are very large on a big painting things will tend to slow down a bit. You have to have a, an amazing system for it not to and even then it may do it. You see I'm just tweaking away here but it makes it feel much more detailed. Of course, something I haven't described yet that is also making it feel more detailed is you'll notice there are, I'm just holding down spacebar and shift and zooming in here, okay? And then holding the right spacebar to drag around. You can see how rough it is. I've, over the watercolor, there's a, a layer, also a watercolor layer of shadow. I've added some opaque highlights. Uh, these I was adding with the pencil. I made a light colour and just added a, bit, a few glints here and there. I'm pressing D now to get back to fitting the screen. You see and it just lifts it and clarifies some of the the fuzzy edges that you will get with the watercolour. One thing I do notice about the watercolour brush, it doesn't seem to, if you had a real watercolour brush on real paper, and uh, it's decent sort of Kalinsky sable or something like that, you can get a nice point on it so you can paint really fine detail even with quite a big brush. This doesn't have the same tactile response as that, but it does have the same nice watercolour -y feel. So the details need to be crisped up later and in the drawing, let's get rid of that. The drawing, I did say, get rid of that too, and that, that uh, there's a bit of an issue here with the composition, all the way down. The composition is sweeping, I'm going to put this on that to make a bigger cursor. The composition is sweeping you off the page. Woo! Woo, stop! You need something to sort of stop it here. Uh, now, I'd quite like 
to put a figure or something down here, a dwarf figure kind of welcoming you. Uh, my original thought was this, when it, when it pops up. Hello. There you go. Uh, I had a little figure here by a sort of, I don't know, a Swiss chalet style balcony uh, sweeping around there. Kind of stops the eye going off the page, uh, leads you up along the edge to this figure here. There's going to be a block of text here. I've been consulting with Claire, and we're, we're likely to put the text here. Um, and then that takes you back round, and you'll kind of go, you'll be going in a circle around the text. That's what the eye will be doing. But that's not quite right to me. That's it's a bit more. It doesn't quite do the job how I'd like it. Uh, I'd like you, the eye to be going more that way, and this takes the eye. Obviously, I've put a vanishing point there on the horizon line. I put in earlier it takes you there that's not why I want to take you back that way a bit because the sweep going around will follow up I don't really want you you're supposed to notice him later her it later so if I lose that one I'm probably going to do something with a vanishing point over here somewhere uh, and the figure looking at, come back uh, the figure looking at you more clicked it twice again didn't I I get too impatient uh, the figure standing there looking at you at the moment is my, and again a bit of something here maybe not going as high just enough to stop you going off the page uh, and hold you and if it's those angles will if a vanishing point is there, it will kind of guide your eye back there a bit as well, sort of slow you down a bit. I also might put a spit bowl here, like you would have in a real dentist's, because it's supposed to be a dentist, you're supposed to associate this with being to the dentist. So um, when the dentist says, ooh, spit, you need something to spit into. So I might put like a wishing well or something there that uh, the giant will be spitting into. There's a nice thought. Maybe you could make a wish at the same time. So while I have this here, I might as well lose the one I don't want anymore, which is this one. Delete. Well, that is busy, isn't it? And then put in a new layer above this one. As you see, I'm still quite layer happy. I'm always layer happy. But at this resolution, we're all right. When it comes to uh, making the picture a higher resolution, uh, getting more ready for the print, I will uh, have a lot less layers uh, so the file isn't too massive that the system can't cope with it and everything slows down terribly, or heavens above, maybe crash, which has been known to happen with software in the past. Painter used to be very prone to that. Right, so I've made a new layer. Go to holding down shift to drag this over here. Selecting the pencil tool, picking the sort of dark brown I've been doing the drawing with. That's what these are here. These are colours I've been referring to quite a bit. I'm holding down control, dragging, see? Uh, that was to do with um, making it look a little bit art ragey, because this is about art rage. And that's the light blue I was doing the chalk work with. That's the colour I picked for the glinty stuff and then variations on that, that's a bit more orange there uh, for the opaque highlights. And this is the line colour I've been using. So holding down control, stroke command, make that small again. Holding down shift, drag it out of the way. So making sure I can see what I want there. I want the figure to be stood about here. Although that's a bit too in line. I don't want it too in line. Kind of want it uh, somewhere between the knees, really. So marking it roughly where you want the feet planted. It's a dwarf, so he's a bit sh he's short. You want to. Uh, ah, what a, what a revelation. Dwarf's been short. I bet you hadn't thought of that. Marking quite cartoony to start with. You can always try and make it a bit more realistic later. So trying not to make it conflict with anything else that's going on. The earlier one was 
conflicting with his thumb a bit. It looked like the giant could have had his thumb on his head, which was something else I didn't like about the positioning before. He can be holding the same tool, different sort of dentist tool, what's this little arm? He could be holding um, a shingle, a shingle as uh, not as in a bit of stone, as in um, the old-fashioned shingle that people used to put out a uh, uh, shop sign, like a shop sign about what they do there. Wondered about that, or well, it'd be no, that's a bit too obvious, a bit too corny to do that. There must be a better way of showing that it's definitely a dentist. Right, I'm holding down Control Stroke Command. Uh, to get a straight line. We did that earlier. I can go up there, that's about right. Go back down like that. See, it's all fairly rough. Some kind of evil looking tool that's going to stick in his mouth. I hope I'm not putting anybody off going to the dentist. I've got to go tomorrow. Doesn't bother me like it used to. I use a spray now instead of injections. Oh, that's much better. Some sort of crash helmet. Special equipment for dentistry. Um, all dentists should wear a crash helmet, really. And goggles. The fun about an illustration like this is you can kind of play and come up with different things as you go along. And the great thing about digital is you're not committed to it. You can go back and change it. Editability is the big advantage of digital. That'd be quite funny if he was wearing a wetsuit, wouldn't it? Well, to me, it'd be quite funny. That's my sense of humour. I'm sorry about that. I'm going in, men. That kind of thing. Rubberized waders. As you can see, I'm taking this very seriously. Well, you should have fun when you're doing your artwork. It's not all pain. Unless you stab yourself in the eye with the back of the stylus, of course. I've done that before. Hello, I've got a message, isn't that nice? In fact, I'll just put you on hold in case I have to deal with it. Ah, that's better. Nothing like a bit of spam to break up the day. Ah, not important at all, that one. Right, back at this. Of course, I suppose what I should really have him doing is holding a giant's tooth. Funny how sometimes the things that seem obvious don't seem obvious. Till you think of them. Then they seem obvious. any reference for this so it's going to be a bit dodgy this tooth but they're that kind of shell some of them are that kind of shape aren't they I may check online later to see if I've got that kind of right and as well as that some sort of evidence of that you're looking past something to lead the eye in, lead the eye in more through this make more of that use make those perspective lines work I haven't had my 
tongue cut out. This is just me concentrating. You have to make the most of me not talking. Let's press D to have a look at this. And I'm pressing Enter to get rid of everything so I can actually look at it. Mm, there's still a slight worry that that's doing that. I don't really want to angle it that way, do I? Because then that echoes that too much. No. Control Z. Well, that could be a little cabin kind of thing, couldn't it? Well, that would probably be better if it was stone. Dwarfs of stone, that kind of thing. All the old associations, fantasy story association of mining dwarves. This is kind of what I'm playing on here anyway. While I've got this separate layer. No, I don't want to do it on that layer. I don't want to do it on the layer it was on. So that's the figure layer. That's the layer that the balcony is indicated on. That's the layer the giant is drawn on. This is the layer and I've done the bits and pieces over the top with the dwarves. The smaller dwarves I mean in the background which will eventually disappear. Yep. See? Doesn't look like anything without them. Well, it doesn't look a lot with the, with the drawing, but... <coughs> but that... And the spit bowl. Oh, where's this horizon? The centre line is there, so I don't really want to get in the way of that. Maybe I have it just cutting across like that. Oh dear, that's terrible. Is it? The start's completely wrong in terms of perspective. We're very close to the horizon line there. It's a horizontal ellipse. So it should have shouldn't have should be pretty flat. That's probably still too much. It's probably still not flat enough. Now the problem with that is that looks like that's going to dip in it. See, I'm going to have to think this through better. This is the the joy and the problem with uh, working fluidly. You have to try things until they work. It can make a piece much livelier but you can have all sorts of issues and problems as you go along that you have to solve, which is the way the way of do, working with it. No, that's too lined up. I don't like that. I will control Z a few times. We've got a number of undos in our age. So you can get back quite a long way. Look at that. Photoshop's 20 would have run out by now. That's gone. Maybe I will try it on a different layer. We'll try it on that layer, just have to remember it's on that layer. See how cavalier I am with my layer management? You can understand why it's easy to get into trouble if you work like this, so you have to keep a you have to keep a good memory about what you've been doing. And remedy things when you know they're wrong almost straight away. Otherwise you have trouble finding them again. Can I put that? Ooh, pardon me. Very nice how much is at lunchtime. No, I'll think about that one later. That's not immediately springing to mind. If I have a big problem with something something, I will often just put it on the back burner for a bit and when I come back to it something my subconscious will have resolved the issue, come up with some solution that I hadn't wouldn't have thought of before. Brains are good at stuff like that. A bit like the old Maxim sleep on it. I'm not planning to sleep just at the moment. Although you might want me to give my voice a rest. Right, what should we do now? Take that out of the way for a start. 
pressing enter to have a look at the whole thing. It's like standing back from a painting. It does pay to do this quite a lot. Keep looking at it, keep looking at it. As you can see, there's a ton of tidying up I'm going to need to do on this, which is time consuming and fiddly, but it will make things much crisper and work better. But it doesn't pay to get too tight too, too early, otherwise you can kill a piece. Get it back again. Let's get rid of this one. In fact, I did just cleared that because I'm thinking of making a new one anyway. I will make a new one. See, I should have cleared. Not thinking clearly. Make a new one that I can plan because I think I've worked out where I want to put this now. I want to move it up one there, keep it with the other. See how easy just drag layers up and down now. And in the time we've been working, or I've been working, um, our lovely team at Ambient have even uh, done a few new improvements. We've moved through into another beta, because we're not quite there yet as I do this. We're very close, the program is almost there, uh, but we're still in beta and we've moved from uh, 14 to beta 15. And now if I right click on this, I can tear this, cor this corner palette out and change with the scale. You have to click in the corner and you can do the same with that one. Right click over that corner and you can do that. That's more controls. Not quite sure how you do that on a Mac yet, but I'm sure you'll be able to. And they've also improved the lock transparency icon there, made it clearer. This is nice. All these little tweaks are going on all the time, just to make it nicer to use. Ooh, I like the team there. Oops, sorry, got interrupted there by a number of phone calls. Um, so took the chance, while I knew I was going to keep being interrupted, to do a little bit more. I've decided to put the pull there, cutting across the gutter, but quite clearly, so it, you should be able to see what it is, even with the fold in the paper in the, in the magazine there. I've also blocked in on another layer, yes, even more layers, some, some more gubbins, some more equipment. Like, if there's a spit pull, it's got to be some way of getting water into his mouth, so why not have the equivalent of like a fire hose uh, with a guy blasting water into his mouth. And also how about a chute like you get outside tall buildings uh, to take the debris away. So we can have a lot of slurry in that down there. I've redrawn the chap in the corner because I wanted to. And put a little bit of more watercolour tone on one of the watercolour layers just so that Pressing D to central centralise the picture, uh, so and then right-clicking to get rid of everything, uh, so that we can see it clearly. Just to that dark shape helps, and then you can have the light coming across there, playing on the figure, which would be quite nice. That'll give it a little focus down there, uh, bring more detail in, and then we can have it fairly nondescript in the middle, so you don't look at that particularly. And then the next focus will be up there, so that should do it. Might put that there might not, that shape, erring on the side of not putting that there at the moment. Um, and I think I will break there and do some more work and then rejoin you again a little bit later. A bit further along still now, and I'm finding the more I play with these watercolour brushes, the more watercolour-y I'm finding them. They are really very good. You can get some really good watercolour effects with this. He says, trying to zoom in. Look at that, for instance. That really does look like watercolour with the edge, uh, the way it's kind of blared around there. 
and that is using that's been using these settings with the thinners quite down auto clean on the pressure quite up not too much loading and working with slightly darker colors as you can see I've blocked in on another layer I've started working on the background to give it a bit more a bit more body really a bit more positive color I'll tidy all this up later uh, but also carried on to put some darker shades in um, over the figure as well in fact it was started out to be a background layer but it's turned out to into an overall layer like, the watercolor tends to be a bit like that with me but I'm really quite impressed with this probably won't keep what I'm going to do next but I'll show you what I mean uh, picking a mid color and uh, obviously with the watercolor brush and these sort of settings you can put it down quite darkly and then by pushing the thinners up you can make it kind of blob if you push it up further you start to mop away how lovely is that is that not really good that really does f look watercolory that is very impressive making the brush a bit smaller so you can get more detail just teasing the edge along making it bigger again and just even working with virtually very little colour you can get nice watercolour sort of effects now the way it actually reacts feels more like watercolour on these settings teasing it down some more and not to forget that unlike real watercolor you can still erase it and you can still use the palette knife on it so if you want to smooth any bits out you can do that make the blends where you want them a bit smoother you have effectively total control. The brush might not be able to go to a point uh, like real brushes but you can compensate in other ways and still keep that lovely watercolory look. Yeah I'm pretty impressed with these. So I'm going to carry on and do some more work like that over the rest of the painting and then come back to a bit later. So it's time I started getting a bit more serious. So I have tackled the layers palette and this is actually the reduced version. I've reduced it to only two layers of drawing, the opaque highlights. Um, there were more layers of watercolour. Uh, I've lost two and I've compressed most of the back, most of the dark background and left the light chalk. I've also consolidated things into two groups. Uh, that, that's the base stuff underneath it, but watercolour and drawing. Let's see, we don't want all that really. Don't need to see all that at once. Started tidying up the drawing a bit. But before I did that, I went to edit and I resized the painting. It is now at the full resolution of 300 dots per inch and these are the measurements required. So I've started tidying up the drawing as I said because that's what will actually crisp everything up quite a lot. works with watercolour to, um, come to hold it all together. You'll see what I mean if I take the drawing out of the way. It just looks like a dog's dinner. In fact, it doesn't look as good as a dog's dinner. Not what our dog eats, anyway. 
and eventually it will go away. Because being bigger file, bigger file, it will take a bit longer to do things now. Like three or four days by the looks of it. Maybe I missed when I clicked. Bet I didn't know. It'll go off and on now. Well, that'll suit me, won't it? Because I just want to show you how bad it looks without it, without the line. Not that it looks great with the line, but it looks worse without it. There. Now come back. See, it just looks like an amorphous blobby shape there. But the line just holds it all together when it's there. Sometime around Christmas. Well, I won't be turning these off very often. If they're going to take this long to do it. But you can see how nice and blobby the watercolour is, so. There's a positive. While we wait and snow falls on the roof. Come along. I'm going to pause, because this is wasting your time. Aha, we're back. Uh, but while you're away, I reduced the size of these palettes so they're not so intrusive. I can see enough so I can still access the different things. I can change layers quite easily. Don't have to be filling the screen with them. Uh, certain points need to be crisped up a lot because they're going to be points of interest. Like the guy down here, which, who is on this layer. So I'll, I'll work a bit on him next. You can see how scrappy the drawing is when you move in. Now that wasn't as evident at the lower resolution, but as soon as you bump it up, you think, oh my goodness. Well, I think, oh my goodness, you might think something similar. Something uh, similar, but not exactly those words. Exciting, isn't it? I don't think you probably don't really need to see any of this. You can see what I'm doing. Again, to save your time, I will pause this and get back to you when there's actually a difference to see. See you soon. Ooh, popping back quickly. Now, here's something to be aware of. In uh, blowing up the image from, it was about 100 dpi to 300 dpi, so it's now three times the size, this will affect the paper texture, the scale of the paper texture. So if you want to maintain the illusion of the same paper texture, you will have to go in and alter it to about three times the scale it was before. For this figure here, I'm not too worried because I'd like him to be fairly detailed. Uh, but I may go back and change my mind about that. For the moment, I'm quite happy for him to be like this. I'm changing the tonal values of the underpainting, this, this base layer here, because that will show through the transparent layers of watercolour and help the illusion of form. Well, I'm going to carry on with that and I'll be back to you a bit later. Meanwhile, a little bit further on, and I've been doing some more jiggery pokery with the layers. Uh, as you see, I've done a little bit more on this figure down here. Uh, I've resolved that sort of gantry thing a bit and started work tidying that up a bit. Um, tidied up his mouth a bit, just crisping things up generally. Doesn't look like much progress, but it's taken a while. But what I have done, I got fed up with working on two layers of drawing, so I've collapsed that. Um, bum, 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 what else? Um, what I'm finding is that I've also, after collapsing the few layers there, the the light blue chalk and the the brown sort of underpainting, that it's um, in places where it's uh, it's difficult to to get it bright uh, without doing opaque paint over the top, which I want to avoid 
as much as possible really because it'll sort of kill the watercolour feel and I can reintroduce some of the brightness by painting on this underlayer in a lighter brighter colour because it was a sort of neutral brown fairly muted tone that we started with using it as the mid-tone and by painting on this underlying layer I'll just zoom in shift control not shift control um, shift spacebar sorry to zoom in it's late at night where I'm working here making mistakes by paint you can see it just lifts it a little bit so you've got this option as well to to revitalize uh, and pick out highlighty bits so you can I will pull back again there actually with D because you'll get a better idea of what's going on uh, and how will it I'm going to get rid of everything by pressing enter because I want to see what I'm doing uh, in the whole pattern of light here what I will also do is remedy something that I mentioned earlier about the paper texture because I would like a little bit more texture in this because it'll keep that water, it'll keep that watercolour feel that's what is showing through there that's where the chalk has picked up the paper texture and exaggerated it when we were still working at lower resolution now we're working at higher re resolution having trouble with the words there uh, you'll notice that that texture is more or less non-existent so on the base layer canvas settings it gives us this dialogue that we've seen before roughness that's not the grain size up a bit not the roughness up a bit as well I was just thinking about it come on think about it some more you also notice there's a thing called lighting which you can turn on and off I clicked it twice because I want it left on because that would actually negate the texture of the canvas if you turn that off if you don't want to you, you can use that to get rid of it and also if you're doing um, uh, oily paint it would make it would just look flat without the lighting no that doesn't want to play no it's just having a big think about this this is what happens when you get to the bigger file sizes Push, I've pushed the roughness right up. You'll see a, a, a vague representation of what it's going to be like. Let's hope that's it. Let's hope that makes a difference. Right. Well, I actually gave up waiting on that, though you won't notice because uh, I paused and ha I'm continuing straight on. Uh, but I forced closed that because I got fed up with waiting and have reopened again. So that's something that uh, seems to take a while on larger file sizes, and this is a larger file size, so it's not. This was something that uh, used to happen in Art Rage 2.5 as well. I got a bit impatient at times. Of course, something I haven't done is knocked down the pressure on the chalk, which also affects how rough it seems. But now I don't particularly notice much much more roughness. Using, um, you can use other tools as well, of course, if you want to be more precise. Use the new pen tool, which will give you a nice opaque line. To pick out sort of knuckly bits, if you want to pick out knuckly bits. Quite bigger than I wanted it, really. Yes. So I might just... As you can see, it's still, if you close in, it's still fairly grotty. But you can see how, working on that layer, I have tidied up that a little bit, added a few more details here and there, and lightened it, because I want it to stand out from the bluish background. So, so picking a yellowish colour, to, that should pick it out against the bluish background. I 
and you see if I use the pen tool you can get quite fine details in this. Just lightening it. This guy is going to be a kind of uh, the, the hose man. The one that's going to water blast the uh, giant's mouth. Of course I should have thought of it earlier but um, they should have that uh, oil of cloves. Clove plants left, right and centre to try and um, for pain relief. And if I have the time I'd like to stick maybe a bush thrusting back that way. There's a nice word, thrusting thrusting back that way because that would then fill that little because that gap is still uncomfortable need something pushing like a branch or something pushing back in that way we we'll just take the eye back in more we'll just resolve that little bit that I'm not happy with go back with the chalk I can't remember if I've done anything here see that's lightening it you can see it's lightening it increasing the contrast Oh, definitely. Yes, that's that's making a difference. Oh, um, yes, there is a little bit. Of, I think I did manage to a little bit of difference with it. There, there is a bit of texture there again, which is good. There you go, look, you can definitely see it now. That's better, that's more in keeping with that. I can add a bit more detail and colour with the watercolours later on. That's better. See, it's just lifting it all slightly. Making the colours sing a little bit more, which is what you want with watercolour. Well, that's what I want with watercolour. Of course, with all media, you can do all manner of things with it. A bit more precise again. About. Oh no, but you can see it's working there, definitely making a difference there. It's probably a little too crisp. No, I probably will have to go back in and do some opaque highlights to get the get that to really zing a bit more. Use the pencil because it's a little bit less harsh than the pen. Just to pick out the how the light would just, I'm not going to draw the individual hairs, but it would pick out the hairs on his arms. This will work better when the line has been tidied up a bit. Because we have the light source. Hang on, come back using that cursor just because it's bigger. Because we have the light source coming in that way onto him. Hence the shadow, so it's the sort of shadow down there and the shadow kind of above his chin across the shoulder there. And that's why this arm is in shadow because the light is coming down like that and that arm is turned away and this arm. So it would just pick up there. Points of 
focus can be accentuated by having the sharpest contrast there. Like notice how in his mouth you've got like almost white teeth, which I don't think you'd have ultra yellow them up a bit, and the dark mouth, but you've got a sharp edge contrast there. So the eye is drawn to that. It's a fairly standard device that people use. I'm just sort of dibbling about, generally trying to enhance the feeling of light here a bit. And I went over this bit earlier, and that's why it's not really showing here. You can see oh, I all the top bit, but I only got down as far as here. See how they go them down? A bit, a bit rough there. Do a bit tighter than that. As I go down there, it really. Well, it doesn't pick it up a lot, but by the time you get the line left on it, that will make a definite difference. You'll be surprised. And that's what I did on here too. Yep. See, there's a highlight there that, that the eye is drawn to. You can spot them about, make, make little points of interest for the eye to hop about to, but try and remember the overall composition. Don't let the little highlights take over and distract from what you're trying to do. I'll knock it down tomorrow, I might be able to make it a little bit rougher still. No, not so you'd really notice, but worth a try. But having sharp contrast there, again, bright against dark. I'll just draw the eye in a bit more. I'll lighten here as well, this is a bit, a bit dirty, yeah, but then I'll I'll add more colour back in with the watercolour to grotty it up that way if I have time. That's all the stuff is if I have time. As I pointed out before, my way of working is fairly time consuming. Not efficient, but just trying to describe the form a bit more how it I want there to be a rope pulling around there, holding the little tug of war team, pulling on the side of the giant's mouth to hold it open. So the guys inside, because there'll be guys working inside, don't get crushed. They've also got the bracing bits of wood in there to stop the jaw closing. They're not totally stupid. Or suicidal. Just changing the scale of the of the brush on the fly, holding down shift key as I go, which is nice to be able to do, it's nice having that shortcut. Things like that do make a difference to workflow, a big difference. Just adding some more subtlety to the creases a bit, because there are lots of little creases that would be in a, in a thing of this size, it definitely would be. And by doing that I can Again, increase the overall contrast. Help describe the form. Make the whole thing pop a little bit more. Again, I will now go off and do my thing on my own. And I come back when we're a little bit further progressed so you don't just go to sleep watching this boring stuff. Catch you later. And a bit further on again, I've done a bit more filling in, tidy things up a little bit more. It's just an ongoing process of uh, gradually bludgeoning the thing to death. Let's see a little bit more detail there. Done a bit of fo loose foliage. I've actually erased 
on that layer there on the sky to, to lighten it up which zings things up a bit more and I've yes indeed I've blocked in some colour on their wetsuits my red for danger they're going in as I said before um, I used a warm a light warm red um, literally very it was it was like that it was pink you couldn't call it red but when you paint with watercolor with this it sort of it darkens down quite a lot uh, so that's a warm color then for the shadows use a colder color to make the contrast in this particular case it's a war it's a warmer light so colder shadows if you could always do it the other way around if it was a colder light then have warmer shadows just zooming in spacebar shift made the brush quite small it's good it does almost seem to want to go to the move up to the edges like real watercolor does just little hints of color these figures are distant you don't need you don't need loads of detail on these in fact it would be distracting you need eyes like a hawk to to really get the same sort of level of detail on the background figures as the foreground figures and then that would detract from the overall sense of focus trying to describe a little bit of form so they read from a distance. I'll press D to go full screen. There. See they're picked out quite nicely. Let's get rid of the palettes. See it's beginning to make a little bit more sense now. Not a lot, but a bit more sense. I also filled in like a dingy dingy colour for the pond because that lifted it lifted it makes it stand out a bit more as well right I'll do a bit more work and then get back to you later again now before I get totally caught up in the fun bit of inventing all this stuff and playing around with the drawing adding bits and bobs left right and center I thought it'd be a good idea to consolidate the like, depth of field that's working here and to do that I have strengthened the line around certain items at the front here I've used the ink line tool on the drawing layer I've used that tool so I've just been around tidying things up a bit putting quite a, a stronger line around the things at the front, keeping it quite simple. I can always work into it a bit more later if I want to make it a bit more subtle. But I have been around the little character there, around the hand and down the arm to bring it forward from this which is drawn, still drawn in pencil. As you can see that pops ahead of that now, that sits in front of that better. Uh, similarly at the back to bring the tree forward from the background and give another staging post of the depth of field I've darkened the shadows down the side of that tree a bit and then when uh, but not worked into the pencil line too much there when I consolidate the pencil line here that should bring that ahead of here of the tree and then this line should bring the face ahead of the gantry and that way we sort of go from the back to there to the face along the arm and to little Bobby here or whatever his name is and I think I know what I want to do here now as well it's taken a while but as I said get your subconscious working on these things and you will come up with some sort of solution I think I'd just like to do some foliage there like the tops of the trees implying that that's a valley down there and the, they're quite high up in fact and also sweep that I don't know if you can see the cursor. Sw 
sweep that line further down which of course a nice crossing diagonals which would then echo this side and make it more like yes they've actually developed a bit of mountainside as a seat for their dentistry business and then with the foliage tops of the trees there that would then bring it back round nicely and still leave that area fairly neutral so that when text drops in there's nothing too much to compete with it and given time we've got to have a, a few birds fluttering out the tops of the trees disturbed by all the activity all nice stuff you can, oh, this all stuff is all like fun to play with later given the time you can have hours of fun with stuff like I used to play with little toy soldiers as you can probably imagine and this is all I'm doing here really uh, just on paper it's all about having fun and hopefully having it show in the picture right well as I hope you can see I've started doing something about this area here now at last and what I've done is I started to work back into this layer here which was the uh, let's make it bigger so you can read it the, uh, the original blue and yellow layer and what I did was with the watercolour and thinners up I mopped away some of that which is why you've got these blobby bits here varying the brush size varying the bleed, varying the thinners uh, varying between wet paper and dry and even a bit of insta dry as well uh, to to break it up and get some lighter shapes in there and as well as that to make sure it wasn't just bland and without texture above the base layer I used some stencils so uh, I made another layer I don't want to keep it for long because obviously the more layers you have it can slow things down I told you I like stencils I made a group for my own um, stencils called it texture because what I intend to do in there is import texture photos and when you click on those they appear now using this these are the same as they were in um, 2.5 and they worked then, there's no reason to that they wouldn't work now you can still rotate them, move them, scale them uh, but you can also scale them in a different way now, let's hope this works yeah, that's to change the scale, if I hold down, I'm holding down control which is command no, that's rotate, sorry. Alt, an option is scale. If I hold down the shift key as well, I should be able to... That's it. Look, we couldn't do that before. You can unevenly distort it now. Which is nice. It's a nice control. But you still have the original rotate, which I started to uh, do by accident. And spacebar to drag around so going through that I used the chalk tool with the same sort of colours as on the background with brown, muted kind of browns and just used that to make a few branchy kind of shapes and then because I did it on another layer I could then erase away so I had it just where I wanted it, not over the fingers just in the background now this is only to act as a base layer for this to be on as I said for added texture so it's not too bland let's get rid of that I right click to get that. There we go. Get rid of that. Then I made yet another layer, setting it to multiply, you know, my favourite. And did some more watercolour to add the darker tones and just to give a bit more control over the shapes I was making. So that's what I'm going to work on now. I'll go back and work on that again for a little bit so you can see what's going on because I like this nice blobby effect it really does feel watercolory see there's some stencils I opened earlier when you save a file it saves stencils with it I'm not going to need them now though it just makes the place look untidy so I'll get rid of them I 
again it's just rather trouble with the working on these sort of blobby things it's not too precise In fact, you can't. It's, it's so pale you can't see what's going on. Too subtle, too subtle. But the great thing with these is you can almost play with them to your heart's content. So unlike real watercolour, where you just come to a, a brick wall in the end, where you can't do anything more with it, where you've just killed it. See, brush is a bit big, but. Take the thinners out, make the paper wet again, just play with different colours, different greens like they would be in nature. You only want to get rough shapes, like the, the, you don't want to get too detailed and prissy with it, otherwise that's all you'll be looking at if you paint every leaf. You want the impression of leaves, the impression of branches. We're not there yet, but by the time we finish, we will be. See, if I go that dark, I just sampled that colour, so at least I'm matching it slightly, but that will be too dark. Although it doesn't really matter. As I said, we can always take it back afterwards. And because the branches and that are on another layer, doing all this stuff, you're not going to affect them. They're still going to be there. So I'll do what I've been doing before. I will carry on with this for a bit and join you again a bit later. Now, having uh, worked on the shapes of these a bit more, I've now moved to working on the opaque highlights layer, just picking out little bits and pieces here and there, changing the colour, giving it some more form. And if I can avoid the temptation to work on this bit over here, then I should be able to keep the eye from roaming off the page. If I put more detail around about here, the eye will naturally be drawn to it. And so we, we avoid the slipping off the page, hopefully, and then that outcrop pointing back towards that figure then sweeps us around, like we said before. So hopefully taking the eye back round the composition. And a bit further on still, I've been working back into this layer here, the one that I added, the extra watercolour layer. I've been dotting this green about all over the place. Because being an outdoorsy sort of field, there'd be a lot of reflected light around, which would sort of pick up on the green if there's green around and I've added it to these uh, shadows in the boulders here which makes them more kind of brown but gives them more more sculpting, more shape. I've even added it to bits like this in these structures, just some of the darker tones. It just picks them out a little bit more. And I've also added yet another layer. I will be collapsing these down, don't worry. Uh, but at the front to darken, I'm tr trying to make this hand pop forward even more because as I work on the stuff in the background, of course, it brings more attention to it and then it doesn't uh, contrast as much with the foreground as it used to. So I have to do something else to try and make this pop a bit more. What I can do is make this shadow darker and also if I've brought the shadow across there, it then separates it from the lit balcony here. But what I'm doing now is working back on that foliage layer just with the eraser, the other end of the stylus, and just picking out little bits of just literally dob dipping around, dobbing around, dabbing around. Any combination of D, B and a vowel that you want to use to give texture. stops it being quite so bland and uninteresting without actually because I'm not do, doing anything specific I'm not drawing each blade of grass I'm just adding a bit of textural interest 
at the same time obviously because I'm using the eraser this lightens it slightly which then that lifts those bushes there away from the ground behind and adds more depth it's all about laying things one over the other and contrast of tone and colour again I won't make you watch all this I'll pop off again and then join you again later And now we've got to here. A bit more done on the foliage, tidied these things up a bit, started to decide what to do with the bottom of that, tighten that up a bit. And I've been I've been a good boy. I actually haven't been adding layers. I've been getting rid of them. I've collapsed all the watercolour layers into one, remembering to put it back into multiply mode, because if you don't, it just looks hideous and it doesn't work properly at all. and I will, well actually, a bit of a fib then, I have just made another layer to go over the top which I will set to multiply and I will use that to boost little bits of colour here and there try and make them pop, darken shadows, that kind of thing just like I was laying another wash in real watercolour so I need to sort out these bits, tighten them up I need to definitely sort out these little figures here because they haven't done anything on them at all and just little bits and pieces all over really and I think I'm going to call that a day for this video uh, you're not going to learn any more from watching me do these bits hopefully you'll like the end product when it appears right thanks for bearing through all this hope you got something from it see you soon bye